Thank you, Professor Sahu. Um, hope, can you can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, complications. I think that is the most worry about all the surgeons that complications, and to deal the complication is uh, very important. At the same time, <laughs> declare your complications is more courageous as well. So thanks for all all contributors who are mm -hmm. going to talk on these topics. And may I call the first uh, speaker, Dr. Kang Tech Lim uh, from South Korea, talking about complications of posterior cervical spine procedures, management and avoidance. How are you everyone? Can you hear me? Okay. We can see your right. slides, yeah. Okay. Can you see? Yes, we slide? can see your slides, we can <clears throat> hear you. Okay, I will start. How are you everyone? My name is Lim. A neurosurgeon in Korea. I will talk about the complication of, of a posterior cervical endoscopic surgery today. It's my uh, disclose. And so according to the pathology, the stenosis, the herniated disc, the posterior endoscopic spine surgery will be the different the approach. I will talk, talk about this and its complication. And the point to be especially the, uh, considered. You know very well this uh, advantage of endoscopic surgery for uh, the spine. There are many advantages of endoscope system in posterior cervical approach. So you can use the, the uh, water irrigation that can uh, provide a good uh, visualization and low infection rate and can prevent post-operative operative kyphosis that uh, does uh, uh, nothing to uh, damage the posterior ligament muscle complex because it is, it is possible that posterior approach can solve the most uh, cervical region, uh, can avoid the fusion surgery at the HDF and can uh, compress so the, for the multiple reason. It will be the uh, advantage. The indication of uh, posterior endoscopic spinal uh, surgery, the cervical lesion, uh, will be the the hernia disc, paracet central foramen disc, and the stenosis central or foramen stenosis. The number of HDF has uh, decreased after introduction of endoscopic the posterior approach. Actually, I will talk about the technique. The jumping and sliding for multiple reasons, the decompression. My cases of a posterior endoscopic approach are 370 cases from the uh, Ju uh, July 2000, 2017. The most of were the foraminal stenosis and the paracentral disc, but some were bilateral decompression uh, for myelopath at spinal cord. I have uh, only two cases of root injury at the beginning. So they had, uh, the, unfortunately, they had uh, the permanent disability, the weakness arm. The both were C5 uh, policy related to root retraction during the, the operations. The so what we are worrying complication will be spinal cord, root injury, dura, and the seizure or any brain damage with the irrigation water of the pressure or infection, kyphosis post-operatively, facet joint fracture, and uh, the uh, visual dis dis disturbance that related to eyeball the compressions. So under the, the general anesthesia with uh, the minimal neck flexion, face in soft handling the with no pressure, eye and nose is very important. We should be careful not to pressure eye uh, can cause the blindness the post-operatively. No head clamp are the uh, proper way for the endoscopic surgery. The ideal landing point of instrument is a medial board of lateral mass to performing the laminectomy. The first uh, one-fourth facetectomy uh, to decompress ipsilateral and contralateral and the shoulder, the axial root, is enough, and it should be careful. Is uh, the vertebral artery? You should be careful uh, not to damage the vertebral artery more the outside. 
the A millimeter, the diameter of the endoscope system is uh, the easier to move the handle in narrow space and hypertrophic facet, the joint the facet surface in degenerative of the spine than uh, bigger size the endoscopy. It's an endoscopic uh, discectomy and uh, foramenotomy. The clean surgical view is one of the advantages of endoscope surgery. We can find uh, the motor root and uh, the sensory root. It's the process, the point point, C6, C7, and the laminectomy C6, C7 first. And then we can expose the jira and the root proximal part and uh, to know, uh, to check the anatomical structure more detail, we need to remove uh, the perineural membrane first. It's a final, so you can see the disc space, the ventral motor root, and those are the sensory roots. So I recommend that before the operation, the, it's very important to check the dynamic MRI, the extension flexion, the, to know what is the main pathology may result in, in compressed spinal cord in case of a myelopathy. The, in case of a three level the stenosis, three level is one skin extension, we can do three level decompression. Posterior approach. Posterior three level is one skin extension can be the better than open microscopic the operation is to see Five, it's a C5 or 6, and the sliding to C6 or 7, it's a C5 or 6, uh, the spinal cord is C6 uh, root, and the move to C6 7. So we can do three level with one skin system with a sliding technique. It's animation, the cervical spine. The distance between the adjacent, adjacent segment is short, each other sliding technique using just one skin instant, one fasciotomy, and the system reached to adjacent area. It's a four level stenosis from the ipsilateral to contralateral. Full spinal canal decompression is available with endoscopy thanks to excellent outcomes of endoscopic decompression, forced the age depth, laminoplasty to be decreased now. As MRI, the actual uh, shows increased spinal canal post-operatively. Post-operative MRI that shows a significant increase in cross-sectional area without muscle ligamentous complex injury. It's uh, the, the full level how to the one skin is done, two fasciotomy, jumping and technique. We can do four level the decompression with endoscopy with the one skin is done. I think the posterior cervical ligament, uh, muscle ligament complex is like a bow string can keep its uh, the shape, coverage of a bow. Endoscope, uh, endoscopy posterior decompression doesn't cause kyphosis because that uh, does nothing to damage the posterior uh, muscle ligament complex. If we apply endoscopic uh, surgery in cervical lesion, laminoplasty can be avoided that cause post-operative kyphosis like this. In case of uh, anterior autofusion, drastic and wider facetomy can be useful for full decompression. That doesn't cause instability post-operatory due to the anterior the autofusion. Bone bleeding can be an annoying event during the operation. Compression cancerous bone firmly during the using the calcium punch can stop the bleeding the, from bone. And uh, uh, dura injury and the root injury will be probably the scariest moment during the, any spine operation. But uh, fortunately, 
there was no dural injury during the endoscopic cervical the surgery. It's a case of a Lumba case. It's a video how to sealing the dura using taco seal fibrin cylinder patch. The strategy depends on pathology. The, the case of uh, the foramular stenosis, just the unlooping is enough for rooted decompression like uh, this, uh, the narrow, the corridor the canal. But the wide decompression include the pedicolectomy is required for discectomy, the like uh, this, the swage, uh, the canal. It's uh, the uh, endoscopy C1, the hemilaminectomy in myelopath from the C1 to alternative axial shoulder tumor, the case, no instability. We can make a space using endoscopic C1 hemilaminectomy. There were, were endless agonies about brain problem related to uh, pressure from water irrigation during operation. Fortunately, there were no any brain complication after operations. It's uh, taken a long time to get the kind of uh, endoscopic uh, technique in high cervical region like a C2 decompression in case of rheumatoid panus arthritis instead of fusion surgery. It's a C2 root and you can do the endoscopic C2 decompression. Yesterday, I mentioned about this, the old male patient have a cervical myelopath the, due to anterior uh, herniated disc and the posterior buckling the ligand flavum. It's a post-operative MRI shows full decompression with uh, the posterior decompression with endoscopy and the endoscopy HDF. First, the uh, posterior decompression with endoscopy and the H endoscopy HDF. So you can see two drain. It's an eight millimeter kg and posterior the drain the, uh, with a posterior decompression drain and the HDF drain at the same stage. It's uh, the posterior decompression spinal cord from ipsilateral to contralateral full decompression and the HDF before the implantation. You, we can see the pulsation of the dura. Okay, the, I think the appearance of uh, endoscope surgery in spine field, they have uh, substantially changed the, in the indications. One of the, big, the biggest change to the spine surgery is that total number of uh, HDF cases were actually decreasing after introduction of uh, endoscope surgery in cervical spine. Maybe this is because endoscopy uh, is uh, doing so many things in cervical spine. The way, the only, uh, only way to overcome the fear of the unknown like uh, complication is to face it with a scientific mind, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lim. It was excellent presentation, nice pictures, and uh, it's, it's very nice to see this endoscopically how much you are doing work with small incision anteriorly and posteriorly, and you are shown how to deal with the complication. Fantastic. Any questions from the audience or faculty? Yeah, can I, uh, PD? Yes, okay. please. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Uh, Kim, very good talk. Uh, I just want to know if uh, you showed the picture of the CSF leak, so, and you are working under a high irrigation flow. So how do you uh, put the fibrin glue? So it's a different uh, the water irrigation, the pressure means uh, uh, water pre irrigation pressure, right? So uh, for Lumba, the spine, the, just the, we uh, use uh, the irrigation pump, but uh, for the cervical spine, just the natural, natural drain will be enough. But there, right. but, when you develop, uh, you showed up this of CSF leak and you uh, managed it with fibrin glue, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. yes. So uh, how do you put the fibrin glue when the irrigation is, do you stop the irrigation for some time? No, no, no. It's uh, the very the sticky. 
the 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 uh, the fiber in the cloth very very sticky. So we can use uh, the taco seal the with uh, the endoscopy under the endoscopy. Yes, using. but you have to stop the irrigation. No, no, no. You don't have to stop irrigation. Yes, I don't need to stop irrigation. How will you? Uh, how will the glue remain there? It's uh, the the pressure is very low, so. But if you uh, to stop the, the the irrigation, you cannot see the fibrin cloth. Okay, so that is something new to me because uh, whenever we use the glue, we always the uh, you can find the uh, you can find this video on YouTube. Okay, because we also use the rapid T seal. Which is a rapid acting, but it has to be. You cannot irrigate when you are putting the glue; it will not remain. It will just uh, flow off with the irrigation. It get washed right. away. Yeah, that's good. That, uh, that's a good question. And uh, also, one more complication which I found, Doctor Lim, was uh, epilepsy after high pressure water irrigation. I think I didn't understand that. How how do you came to know that all this epilepsy because of the high water pressure irrigation? Some patient uh, uh, had uh, the uh, post-operative headache only, mm. but uh, I worry about uh, the seizure, the epilepsy, post-operative. But the, fortunately, there was no any the symptom, the uh, post-operative. Just uh, the headache. Some patient. Uh, oh. I've checked. I've checked the uh, uh, brain CT to know any the, the damage of the uh, brain. The fortunately. There was no any brain problem. Right. Okay. That's good. Um, any other questions? Go to the move to the next topic. Uh, is anybody else there? Is